All right, so for this video tonight, we're going to talk about 9.4 and 9.5. Now, 9.4 is all about the cross product. Once again, we're going to be using vectors. Uh, specifically, what the cross product does is when you take the cross product of A, and we'll write A cross B like this, what you get is a new vector, not a scalar like the dot product, but a new vector that is orthogonal to both A and B. Okay, so an example of this would be um, when you're looking at the corner of the room and you see the wall going up like this and it hits the ceiling up here like so. And so here's the one wall coming in like so. It's right between the ceiling and this one wall. There's a vector, if you will, here. You could think of this as A. You could think of this fella as B. When they come into the wall, when they come into the corner, they're orthogonal to one another. Okay, my picture kind of sucks. Maybe it would be better if I drew it kind of like that, I guess. Anyway, so these two are orthogonal to one another. And then this fella here, this is A cross B, let's say. And he is orthogonal as well. Now, it could just as easily have been this one here, looking at the wall and the floor here. And then this could be going up the wall instead. Now, we're going to talk about which one is A cross B and which one's B cross A. They have their own ideas. But the idea is this. If you take A cross B, which is itself, again, a vector, and you take the dot product of that with A, it's equal to 0. That is also true if you do it with B. Notice that A dot B in this case does not have to equal zero. It could, but doesn't have to. That's not important. A and B do not have to be, I can't say doesn't equal zero, doesn't have to equal zero. They don't have to be, they don't have to be orthogonal, but A cross B dot A is equal to zero and A cross B dot b is also has to equal zero what is going on there okay now why do we do this well let's talk about this for a minute so um everybody who has ever turned a wrench or anything like this understands how this works if you push directly up like this the force on the wrench it creates a torque right and so here's a lever arm and up and around it goes yeah, I mean, that's just a fact. Any, anybody knows that. But suppose that it's a tight compartment, so you have to apply a force at an angle that isn't perpendicular. You're with me? You're pushing here with your hand. But, dot, 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 dot. It's this, for, it's, this, it's this piece of the force here that's important. Now, this angle theta here is the same as this angle theta here. So this side over here is F sine theta. You with me? So the torque, which is normally force perpendicular force, so it's the amount that's perpendicular to it times the lever arm, could also be rephrased as force sine theta times L, or if you prefer, force L and then sine of theta. Okay? Now this is where this thing comes from. It's kind of a big deal, the cross product is. Okay? Um, this is where it comes from, is in the idea of torque. Now, these are, when I say it's a force, well, force is a vector, but what we're talking about, actually, it's the amount of force, okay, in terms of a vector. It's the amount of the force. And so it's the magnitude of the force vector, is what we say. And it's also the magnitude of this vector, which is, in essence, the wrench. You know, for crying out loud. Okay. Now, how does that work in practice? Well, in practice, if you had a wrench that was like this, and it's, notice how my wrench is all in the x direction here. It's all in the x direction. Let's say this wrench is 12 inches long. It doesn't really make any difference. It's just some units long. And I'm pushing with a force that is, well, let's just say one. 
say half a meter. That makes it easier. And, I don't know, 50 newtons of force. Then the torque then is simply 50 times a half or 25 newton meters of force. Okay. If, however, my wrench was like so, it's still half a meter, but I'm pushing here with the force of 50 newtons at an angle in here or in here, either way you want to think of it, of 30 degrees. Then this side over here is 50 sine 30, which is 25. So now the torque would be 25 times 0.25, which is, of course, 12 and a half newton meters. Okay. Now this is where this all comes about because it turns out that when you take A cross B, it is equal to the magnitude of A times the magnitude of B times the sine of theta. And then there's this goofy little vector right here. Because remember, this is all scalar. And remember that this guy is itself a vector. So this is just how much this is the direction. So this is where it gets kind of interesting and kind of fun. Okay? So when you apply a torque, that torque has to be in a certain direction. Now, picture your hands like so. Okay, When you do cross products, you always put it so that they are not tail to head but in fact they are butt to butt if you will okay so where that's a and that's b and there's theta okay. we use what is called the right hand rule to determine which way n is pointing now the way i have it drawn since a and b are both in my tablet here on the page N is either going to be going straight into the page or straight up out of the page. That's all it can be. But the question is, which way is it? And to find that out, you use the fingers on your right hand. And since it's A cross B, you take the fingers on your right hand and you go from, you cross the A vector first and then the B vector like so with your right hand. Now, doing this, my fingers go through here like that. My fingernails are over here like so, and back. And my thumb is pointing into the board here, okay? So my hands cross through A and B, and my thumb points into the board. Now, notice if I was doing B cross A, B and A, and then I did B cross A, my fingers would be over here. They would swing over. There's my fingernails, like so. And this time, with my right hand, my thumb would be pointing up, up toward me, up out of the page. So this is out of the page, up into the air, out of page. This is into page. Now, it is called a right-hand rule. When I was in high school... And I first learned a right-hand rule, and it was for one of the ones for electronics. I think it was for, um, I don't remember something about how, I don't remember which, I don't remember which right-hand rule it was, or it might have been about torque in a physics lesson. But I just, in my mind, high school kid, I, it, to me it sounded like a right-hand suggestion. Okay, and I'm right-handed, so I have to have my pen in my right hand. And so I was doing all my problems with my left hand. And, of course, I got them all 100% wrong, which is kind of annoying, but, you know, life goes on. Now, up here, okay, um, we're going to talk about, we're not going to talk too much about the wrench business here, because what we've done here is simply a matter of what's going to happen with this. Now, you all know, if you've turned a wrench, this is righty-tighty, lefty-loosey, yes? So, as you turn it this direction, if you turn the bolt that way, okay, what happens to the nut? Well, the nut is going to go down the threads, right? So if the threads go, you know, the threads go down into the page like this, the nut's going to continue on down the threads that way. 
That is the biggest reason why we have the right-handed threads and left-handed threads the way we do it. Okay. Now, <clears throat> excuse me. Now, we um, uh, I know when I was a kid we had a truck that um, well two trucks actually that were made in the '60s, the early '60s that had on the driver's side on the left hand side actually had left handed threads the idea being as you're going down the road they would tend to tighten up instead of loosen up as you're driving and they would keep getting tighter and tighter and tighter it's kind of a good deal now um now if i just had a vector like so again this way and this way and this is a and this is b if you will here like so i put them tail to head what if they weren't tail to head though what if they weren't tail to head what if the head was here like so well i can fix that by simply dragging this vector out here like so now here's b out here the angle that i want is this angle here okay so if you wanted a cross b first of all butt to butt like so fingers come from through a first like so on my right hand there's your fingernail, and you will see that your thumb points up, which means then the torque is up out of the page on this one. Okay. Now we'll do a little bit more with that in class on a couple of things on, on a Wednesday night, but let's jump into, well, suppose I have this factor. And this is vector A, let's say. And I have vector B. How do I find A cross B, you ask? Well, that's a good question. So, how to do that, it is a determinant. And it's the determinant of this matrix. Now, so for some of you, it's been a while since you've done a determinant, maybe been so long you don't remember if you know how to do a determinant well i'm going to learn you how if you know how there's like three different algorithms for this i'm only going to show one of them this is my favorite way of doing it okay and uh but there's another way of doing it at least there's at least two other ways of doing the determinant okay um but this is my favorite i call it, it's called expansion by minors Okay, and so what happens is if you just look at the I right here for a minute. If you cross out the row and the column that I is in, you are left with 7 and negative 2 and 0 and 9. Okay, now this is the algorithm. It's always minus right here, always minus on the J. That's just the rules. That's just how it is. Don't ask. So if you cross out the row with the J in it and the row with the J and the column with the J in it, you're left with 3 and negative 2 and 2 and 9. And then it's always plus K. And if you cross out the row with K and the column with K, you're left with 3 and 7, 2 and 0. Okay? So this is what we do. It's always 7 times 9, so this times this. So 7 times 9 minus, always minus, 0 times negative 2. And whatever that answer is, you times it by i. Minus j, and then it's 3 times 9 minus 2 times negative 2. Plus k, 3 times 0 minus 7 times 2. So this is 63i. Here's 27 minus a minus 4 is 31. So this is 31 in here, but it's minus 31. Okay. Is that 0 minus 14 is minus 14? Okay. This thing right here, or if you prefer, 63, negative 31, negative 14 is. A cross B. Notice how when I did A cross B, I put A on top and B on the bottom. Okay? 
when I'm going to do B cross A, I'm going to flip them around to backwards. Now, notice let's bring down our two other vectors here for just a moment. 3, 7, neg 2. Let's do the dot product here, shall we? That's 189 minus 217, I think, plus 14, no, 200. I'm using the calculator. <laughs> oh, it's 28, you jack wagon. 28, dummy. And look at that. 28 plus 189 is 217. Minus 217 is equal to 0. Well, that's good because that's what it was supposed to be. It's also true for the other one, 209. So 126 plus 0 minus 126 equals 0. Check. Notice, though, that 2, 0, and 9 dot uh, 3, 7, negative 2 does not equal 0 because it's 6 minus 18 is equal to negative 12. So these two are not per are perpendicular, and that's okay. But A cross B is orthogonal to A. It's also orthogonal to B. Check. Now, suppose I flipped it around, I, J, and K. And I said, let's put our, uh, let's put B on top. So 2, 0, 9. And 3, 7, negative 2. And let's expand by minors again. So that gives me. I, and then it's 0, 9, 7, negative 2, minus J. Again, cross out J's column and J's row. You get 2, 9, 3, negative 2, plus K. Again, cross out J's row and column. You get 2, 0, 3, 7. So 0 times negative 2 is 0, minus 63. So minus 63 I. Here's negative 4 minus 27 is negative 31. So it's negative and negative. So positive 31J. And then 14 minus 0 is 14. So plus 14K. Notice that A cross B is equal to negative B cross A. In other words, they're the same, they're the same, um, same vector going in opposite directions. Same length, uh, same everything, 180 degrees opposite directions is all we're saying. Okay? Um, so that's kind of a big deal. So check this out. Could you divide out by the magnitude of A cross B? What would that give you? Well, it would give you a vector that it is still orthogonal, just be one unit long, right? I'm going to pull up the calculator here. Maybe I am. I'm going to open that because I want to show you something. I want to open this, get my calculator out. Give it to me, you hippie. Boom. There it is. Nice. So, oh, shut up. Give it to me. There we are. So, uh, no. Uh, crap. There we go. Now, I'm going to find the magnitude of my vector here, maybe. 63 squared plus 31 squared plus 14 squared. 71 and a half. So, so I could do negative 63. Well, actually, my other one was A cross B was actually 63 divided by 71.5. Negative 31 divided by 71.5. And negative 14 divided by 71.5. And of course, you get the calculator, I can get a nice approximation for that. So, uh, call it 71.6, whatever you like. It's not that big a deal to me right now. So, 0.88. Point four three and fourteen divided by seven. Uh, point one nine five. 
remember, this thing here dot one of the other vectors, 2, 0, 9, for instance, right? I think it was. Yep, 2, 0, 9. This should also equal 0, or awfully close to it. I mean, we rounded a skosh, but it should be awfully close to 0 as well, okay? So just keep that in mind. All I did was shorten the vector up. I didn't change its direction or anything. A okay. couple more here. Let's see if we can practice these, and then we'll take a look at another one. So if I want to do A cross B where A is, oops, what am I doing? Where A is 2, 9, negative 9, negative 1, and B is 3, 4, 12. And I want to do A cross B, so I just I, J, K, 2, negative 9, negative 1, 3, 4, 12. So it's I, and then cross it out, you get negative 9, negative 1, 4, 12. Always minus J. Like so. So nine, negative 9 times 12 is negative 108 minus a minus 4. Oops. Times I. 24 minus a minus 3 is 27. And then it's minus already. And I'll put the J behind it just because it looks prettier. And that's 8. Minus a minus 27. Okay, so 35K. So it's 27, so minus 27J. And negative uh, 104I. Okay. And again, I prefer myself to write it like this, but I, you know, it's fine. I'm good either way. So this is A cross B. Now, again, you could check to see if it kills one of those other two. So I'm just going to do 3, 4, 12, I think. But you know what? This feels like a job for the calculator. So it's kind of a cool deal. This calculator will do something that I think really helps us out a little bit. These little brackets right here, the little squ square brackets, so second bracket there like so. Negative 104, comma, negative 27, comma, 35, bracket. And then if you hit the STO key right here above on, STO alpha A. So I'm going to store this vector as vector A. And then I'm going to do it again. And I'm going to put in 3, comma 4, comma 12. And I'm going to STO that as a different value. I'll call it B. Never store it as X, Y, Z, or T. You will regret it, I promise you. Ta-da! Now, wouldn't it be cool if our calculator could do a dot product? <laughs> well, it can't. So second, math. Number four is matrix. If you scroll up a ways or down a ways, rather, you will find vector ops. What? Dot product. And go A, comma, B. Yes! It zero, just like we thought it ought to be. Now, some of you might have noticed while we were in there that I can get a unit vector. And by George, I can. So I could find the unit vector of A, and it will divide it out by its length for me. This is disgusting, so if you don't like that, diamond enter will give you the approximate values for it. Like we said yesterday in class, or a couple days ago in class, if you do the dot product of a particular vector with itself, so let's say this one, comma, itself, it should be the magnitude squared. Well, geez, how about that? It's a unit vector, so 1 squared is, it's, well, it's 1, obviously. Okay. Now, some of you might have noticed while I was in there also, that there is a cross product. And yes, I would like you to be able to check your math and see if it looks reasonable. So, I'm going to type in yet another, actually before I do, I'm going to type in a third 
um, vector. So it's this 2, 9, negative 1 business. I'll stop it. So 2, comma, negative 9, comma, negative 1. All right, I think it's important oops, to be able to see that there's lots of ways to check yourself and be quicker about things. Okay, so I can't remember which one was A. <laughs> uh, B. So I'm going to do B. I'm going to do the cross product of B and C. So actually, I'm going to do cross product of C and A. So second, na, ta, 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 ta. cross product, and C was my A matrix over here, right? Comma, B was my was my B matrix over here, I think. No, yeah, it was my B matrix. And negative 104, negative 27, 35. Nice. Again, if you flop them around, it's not the end of the world. Notice it's 180 degrees opposite is all. Okay. So it's kind of a cool way of checking yourself. I, I rather enjoy it. Uh, it's, to me, it's a lot of... To me, it's worthwhile if uh, I know how to do some of those things as life goes on. Um, it speeds up my life, and, you know, I make plenty of mistakes. I don't need more mistakes to be made, to be honest with you. Now, a um, couple of things here. Um, there's a couple of properties that I haven't already showed you. So, C, A, cross... B is equal to C A cross B, which is also equal to A cross C and B. In other words, it doesn't matter at all. Oopsie daisy. It doesn't matter at all when you multiply through by the constant. You can take the cross product first and then multiply through by the scalar. You can hit the one by the scalar first and then do it, or you can hit the other one with the scalar first and then do it. Whatever makes you happy. Okay? Um, if I had A cross B cross C, oops, I'm sorry, not cross C, dummy, plus C, and these are all vectors, this looks like distributive property, and it more or less is. So that's the same as just doing A cross B plus A cross C, okay? And if you have A plus B both vectors cross C, which this also, it also looks an awful lot like the distribution property. And it is, but be careful, it is important that it's A cross C because A is first over here and then C. Remember, it's not commutative because B cross A is the opposite of, of A, of A cross B is the opposite of B cross A. So just be aware of that, okay? Um, I don't do anything with this, but if you're ever of a mind, if you're ever like, I, I need to know the area of this, of this parallelogram. <laughs> oh, okay, weirdo. Oh, I'm going to call this a vector and I'm going to call this a vector and that's theta between them right there. So in other words, they're butt to butt and this is A and this is B. Well, the area of this parallelogram which of course you want to say is base times height but what is height height is a sine theta true well there you go so a cross b is another way of finding the area of that the magnitude of this the magnitude of this vector is the same as this. Now that's important that the area cannot be a vector, but it can be the magnitude of that vector. Again, your book shows that I never do anything with that um, because that's just not something that comes up an awful lot uh, in, in your everyday life. Also, I would like to point this out that on page 657, they talk about how to do the cross product and it looks like this. If I see you doing this, I will probably mock you a little bit. Um, my son went to college here last 
well, he went last, um, I guess it was last fall, he came home from college one day and he says, oh, we're doing cross products and they're so hard. And the teacher had him doing it this way, memorizing this formula and wondering why people hated the class so much. And I'm like, what are you, for crying out loud. Seems to me I remember this back in the day. Some teacher showed me this, and I went, what are you doing? What are you doing? And this is actually brackets like this. Well, what it really means is this. Look, you've got A, the A vector here, here, and here, I, J, and K, right? And then you've got the B vector here and here. This stuff here is exactly how I was doing expansion by minors. That is exactly what I got when I did that. Notice it was A2 times B3 minus A, B2 times A3. You see this? And in the middle, it was... Now, notice in the middle, it was supposed to be A1 times B3 minus B1 times A3. Oh, but that's right. It's minus J. So that's why their signs are flip-flopped here. Okay? And then for the last one, it's A1, B2, and then it's B1, A2, and it's subtracted. I hate that. I, I Don't memorize that, for God's sakes. Learn how to do it with the, with the expansion by minors. To me, that is the easiest way of going about it. It, it, it gives you more of a, um, an algorithm to follow. Okay? So that's the way I do it, and I think it's... it's a, pretty good way to go about it. Now, I want to do one more here real quick, and then uh, like we'll move away from this business here. So suppose you were given the following. Um, I, so A is equal to I plus 2J plus 3K, and let's let B equal negative 2j plus k. Okay, so if I want to do a cross b, i, j, k, 1, 2, 3, 0, negative 2, 1. So i, and then we're going to take these bottom four down here, so 2, 3, negative 2, 1, minus j, so get rid of this column here. So it's 1, 3, 0, 1. Plus k, 1, 1, 2, 0, negative 2. So that's 2 times 1 is 2, minus and minus 6. Minus j, that's 1 minus 0, so just 1. And then plus k, and then it's going to be negative 2 minus zero, so just that. So in other words, this is 8i minus j minus 2k, or if you prefer 8, negative 1, negative 2. Okay? Now, I uh, was monkeying around with this Windows 10 business today because I'm having the hardest time doing a 3D calc plotter on this um, 3D calc. Plotter. 3D calc plotter. No, not cake plotter, you goomba. L C space. 3D calc. Oh, P. 3D calc plotter. Go. So it's this one right here. And it seems to work in Windows 10 just fine if I use Firefox. I don't know why. Um, on my other laptop, I can only use it in Explorer, not Chrome. I don't understand. I don't really want to know either, so it's not that huge of a deal to me. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to graphs like I showed you last night, add a vector. And the vectors that I'm going to add are the original vectors that I had, which were... Um, I forget, so I'm going to minimize this as skosh. Minimize. Minimize. Mm -hmm. What are you doing? 
Oh, shut up. Oh, probably because of this dumb thing. Close. Cancel. Okie dokie. Well, you know what? It worked this morning. Uh, brother. Oh, my God. You just go away. Nobody cares. All right. Well, pardon me a moment while I kick Firefox in the butt for a minute. Try that again. There we go. You bet it works this time. Come on, run. Oh, for God's sakes. Now what do you want? Stop plugging in. Oh. No, never. CD calc plotter. There it is. Here it comes. All right. Now let's see if I can memorize them. One, two, three. That seems easy. <laughs> Probably can pull that one off. All right. So again, let's get, turn this function off. Hit graph again to get rid of it. Graph, we're gonna add a vector, and that vector is just one, two, three. And I'm gonna just let it start at zero, zero. And I'll leave this one as a black one, but I'm gonna make it a little bigger, so I'll make it four, which makes it thicker. So there it goes off into space, like so. And then I'm gonna go back over and write down my other one, which was zero, negative two, one. I'm gonna add a second vector and zero comma negative two comma one and I'm gonna pick a different color just so that I can tell them apart nice again those are the original vectors they may or they may not be orthogonal we don't care but eight negative one negative two I really care about that one so eight negative one negative two First, you weren't convinced, but look at that. If I turn the red and the black so they almost look like they're in the same plane right now, the blue is coming off perpendicular to both of them. But that blue one's pretty long, so let's fix that. So it's kind of long, so that's 64 plus 4 is 68, that's 69. So if I just do this, and I'm going to add a vector. So I'm going to divide by the square root of 69 on the previous one. So divide by, just divide by the square root 69. And then divide by square root 69. And then divide by square, oops, square root. 69 and I'm going to pick a different color so it stands out on top of that blue line because of course that's where it's going to show up so I'll pick this yellow maybe and of course I don't see oh there it is you see it huh yeah baby same direction as the blue and it's one unit long that's pretty cool okay nice but it is also orthogonal to the other two okay so that is 6.4 in a nutshell. Uh, not really a nutshell. It's a pretty detailed explanation. I'm sorry, 9.4 rather. It's a pretty detailed version of 9.4. Now 9.5 is uh, pretty easy to be honest with you because it really boils down to being about lines and, well, planes and, and the equations thereof. We'll also look at graphing a few of those as well. Uh, so you'll see that it's not too hard to pull off. Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me.
Excuse me. Woo. Okay. So, me personally, if I told you that I wanted to go from point A, and so I'll just write it as an A like this, to point B, right? So I want to go from here to there. I could take a vector. Let's call that vector R just for grins, okay? No, nah, actually, don't call it R because I want to use an R later on. Let's call it um, let's call it Big M just for grins, okay? So what would Big M be? Well, Big M would be 6, 5, negative 11, I think. Is that right? Does everyone see that? Nice. But here's my question to you. Could you write three equations that tell me how to get from A to B? Well, sure. I started at 7. I added 6. And I'm going to put this little T on the end of it there. Now, some of you might kind of go, well, why T? Well, you'll see. I can't use X, obviously. So... What I often do is I use T as a parametric equation. I, this matter of fact, this looks like a parametric equation because, well, it is. The parameters, a time constant. Okay. So how long does it take to get from 7 to 13 if you're doing it along this way? Well, when T is equal to 1, we've gotten there, yes? In other words, it takes us one unit of time. What if I wanted to take a half of a unit of time? Suppose I did. I mean, just hypothetically, suppose I wanted to take a half a unit of time. Well, then I would need to be going twice as fast, yes? So in other words, I would need to have 2m right here. So this would need to be 12. This would need to be 10. And this would be, need to be negative 22, right? What if I needed to take 6 units of time. Well, then I'd need to slow myself down, right? And so instead of timesing by 2, I need to divide by 6 or multiply by 1 sixth. And so that would end up being 7 plus 1 sixth and negative 1 my, uh, plus 5 sixths and not 1 sixth, you jackass. 6 over 6 is 1. There you go. And 4 minus 11 over 6. Bam! And this right here would take six units of time to go from A to B. But you're still going the same direction. The only difference is in how fast you're getting there. Okay? So these are parametric equations. Okay? These are stuff that probably you've seen before somewhere. Okay? That's not a big deal. Let me, let me show you something pretty cool here. What if, hypothetically, I said, look, I want to get... I want to get to a place, but instead of wanting to get to a place called, um, to get to a point per se, I want to get to a, a, to a place where I, a, a place, quote unquote, a place, a, a state of being where I have three things. And the three things that I want are, I think I'll write it like this, my X final position, my Y final position, and my z final position. Does that make sense? In other words, this is where I want to get to. I want to get to a place where I have this. But I'm starting off from a place where I have this, an initial y val x value, an initial y value, and an initial z value. Okay. And, and so what did I do to that? Well, to get from to pull this off, what I'm going to have to do is, well, I'm, needing, I'm going to need to add to this, I'm going to need to add to this, some vector. Now, your book refers to it as V, which makes sense, I think, in a minute once you see that. And it's going to be, let's call it V1, or V sub X, maybe, V sub Y, and V sub Z. In other words, this is the velocity in the Z direction, the velocity in the y direction and the velocity in the x direction. And then the question will be, 
How long did I do that for? Well, I will just times this thing by t, which is time, which is a scalar. And so your book comes up with this equation right here. Ah. This right here looks an awful lot like to me y equals m x plus b. This is nothing more and nothing less. Nothing more and nothing less than what you did in Algebra 1. The only difference being is I could write this vector over here as the vector that I want to go to. And the vector that I wanted to go to is 13, 4, negative 7. 13, 4, negative 7. That's where I want to get to. Notice I wrote it in this fashion. This is called a column vector. It's just a different way of looking at it. I started at this position. 7, negative 1, 4. And I'm just going to use 6, 5, negative 11 right now. Like we did on the original function. And we simply stick a T behind it. By doing that, what we've done is we've, in essence, made three separate functions. Look across the top. 13 is equal to 7 plus 6t. 4 is equal to negative 1 plus 5t. Negative 7 is equal to 4 plus negative 11t. Can you see them sitting there like that? It's a pretty cool deal. Well, what we can do with this in in uh, 3D Calc Plotter is pretty cool because we can come in here, if you hit uh, this redo, it just resets the program. Get rid of that stupid function again. We don't want it. Okay. Uh, I forget what my original points were. I'm going to plot them. So my original points, 7, negative 1, 4. And so I'm going to go from negative 10 to positive 15 on every direction, if you don't mind. Just want to make it simple on myself. I don't want to have to sit there and screw with it. So, negative 10, 15, negative 10, 15, oops, negative 10, 15, done. Okay, get rid of that. Now, Go to graph, we're going to add a point. Now the point we're going to add is, um, oh crap, I forgot what it was. <laughs> uh, maybe, where did my thing go? Oops, yep, that's the one I want. So my point, 7, negative 1, 4. So in here, 7, negative 1, 4, if I go to point, uh oh, where'd it go? Oh no. Oh no. Sometimes it hides behind all this mess. And sometimes then sometimes the stupid computer locks up on you. And that makes it even more better. Uh just stop the freaking plug in. Close the window. I think Windows 10 and, and and Java don't get along too good. I might be mistaken. Maybe it's just me. Oh, geez. 7, negative 1, 4. Well, I'm going to... Just a minute. I'm going to graph that point before I forget it. Oh, damn it. Vector, you dummy. 7, negative 1, 4, size 4 point is nice, I'll make it red so it stands out. Notice it doesn't show up because my window isn't 
right currently. I'll fix the window in just a minute. 13, 4, negative 7. And a different color, and boom. All right, now let's change this up again. There they are. So my points are here. Now, we went for, we're going from red to blue, okay? So what we're gonna do, in essence, is the same thing we did yesterday. We could do it, we could put a vector in, but I don't wanna put a vector in. Instead, I'm gonna put these equations in, and it goes in as what is called a space curve. Now, a space curve is nothing more and nothing less than a system of parametric equations. So it was seven plus, 6t. In the middle it was, oh crud, what was it in the middle? Um, negative 1 plus 5t. And the bottom one, it was 4 minus 11t. Now, time, obviously, I don't need negative time at all. And I don't need to go for 10 seconds. One second's going to get it there. I'm going to let it go for two seconds. I hit graph, and shoom, it shoots from here out this direction. Again, it started at time equals zero, so that means it started here, and it came this way. Now, you can add orientation arrows, and it tells you which direction it's going. You can step it through, and you can watch as it goes through where it's at, kind of. You should be able to see it, although I'm not seeing it on there. Oh, I didn't hit trace. So if you hit trace, now what it's doing, remember, is it's actually tracing out where you are. So it's actually tracing out the vector. So from zero out to here, that is that collection of points. So initially we're at the collection of points, or I have the condition that I have this vector initially, right here, 7, negative 1, 4, okay? So that's what that vector, this blue vector, is pointing at. Now if I step it through, you can watch it follow it. And it tells you where you are. So when t is equal to 0.48 seconds, this is where you're located. This is your x, your y, and your z. Keep stepping it through. When it's 0.9 seconds, here you are. When it's one second, you are right there, which is where you're supposed to be. And so on, and so on, and so on. The idea of a space curve is a big deal. We will do it a lot later on. One could see that if this had a cosine or something in here, like cosine of t or something, this could be really fun to play with. Obviously, we're not doing that tonight, so don't do that and freak yourself out. But uh, maybe this would be t squared or something just for fun. But one could see where one could have quite a bit of fun with this thing. In the next couple of days, we will be doing that. Squared. So if you hit graph on this, notice it no longer starts at my normal thing. But notice that my graph is kind of bent around now, right? Because it's got that quadratic looking shape to it. Anyway, we're going to have a lot of fun with space curves. But today, all we're going to be doing is nice linear ones. Well, kind of like this guy. Okay. So you're going to be concocting them. Not so much graphing them, but concocting them. Okay. Now... Um, there is another way to write that, and I'm going to show it to you momentarily. There's actually two more ways to write these problems. Um, those, the two that I've already shown you, are my two favorites. Okay, so my two favorite ways to write it are this way, right, and this way. This is number one favorite of mine. If you ask me to do it, this is how I'll do it for you almost every time. This is my second favorite way. The rest of them, eh, eh. They have their merits for some things, but it's not my favorite way of going about it. For instance, okay? 
For instance, this one. Um, well, I shouldn't say that. That's, I'm sorry, that's not what I wanted to say. Hold that thought. Hold that thought one moment. I'm sorry. The other method, the third method, is this one here. And I don't really want... Yeah, I was getting ahead of myself on that one. The third method is this guy. And so what you'll notice up here is if I bring these guys down, 7 plus 6t, negative 1 plus 5t, z equal 4 minus 11t. If you solve for t here, you will find that you get x minus 7 over 6 is equal to t. If you solve for t here, you get y plus 1 over 5 is equal to t. And here you're going to get, uh, well, let's see, it's 11t over t is equal to z, 4 minus z. So divide by, so you're going to get t is equal to 4 minus z over 11. Hey, they're all equal to t, which means they're all equal to each other. In other words, this is how you know uh, you can know that you're right on something because at that time, they, they all have the exact same time. For instance, we know that at time equals 1, we knew where we were. So where were we at time equals 1? Well, at time equal 1, we were at uh, 13, and we were at uh, negative 4, I think. Is that right? No. 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 Where were we? 4. Right, 4. Duh. 4. And uh, negative 7. So when t, when t equaled 1, this is where we were. So if you plug 13 here, 13 minus 7 divided by 6 is 1. 4 plus 1 is 5 divided by 5 is 1. Negative, 4 minus or minus 7 is 11 divided by 11 is 1. These are what are called symmetric equations. And what they're the most used for is to know if two equations or two space curves or, or two systems of equations cross one another. For instance, x equals 3. Oh, what am I doing? I don't have to think about it on the first time. Look at me just making up numbers as I go. Sure. So then x equals uh, 10t minus 9. y equals 3t plus 1. And well, z is equal to 2t plus 5. So here's where it gets interesting. Okay, so if these two lines intersect one another, that means their x, their y's, and their z's must all be equal at the same time. Now, there's a railroad track not too far from my work. I've driven across it a million times. I've yet to be hit by a train. And that's because even though the road and the, and the railroad track cross, the train and I do not cross at the same time. Okay? So even though we could have the same X, Y, and Z, we don't have them at the same time. So how to know if these lines cross one another is simply to say, hey, look, 3T plus 5 better equal 10T minus 9, right? And I want to know where are they equal. So I solve this, and I get 7t is equal to 14. So these guys are equal when t is equal to 2. Their x's are. Well, let's see if that's true for their y's. If you plug a 2 into here, 2 times 4 is 8 minus 1 is 7. So, so, 
So 7 for this guy. Plug 2 into here. 3 times 2 is 6 plus 1 is 7. So my x's are 11 for both of them. My y's are 7 for both of them. This is at t, t equals 2. But are my, are my z's the same? So if I 5 times 2 is 10. 2 times 2 is 4, plus 5 is 9. Oh, their z are not equal. So what does that mean? It means they do not cross one another. If this had been a 6 here, then their x, y's, and z's would have all been the same. And therefore, we know that these two lines cross one another. Okay? Now, uh, go back to where it was a second ago. The question is, so they don't cross. The question is, are they are not equal? So they don't cross, but the question then might become, are they parallel? Or are they skew lines where this one's up above the other one? Okay? And the answer is, well, we've got to look at the look at their slopes. So if you look at their equations of their slopes, it's a three, four, five relationship here, 10, 3, 2. Uh, no, these guys are going to be skew lines. They would need to be like 3, 4, 5, 6, 8, 10 in order for them to be a parallel line. And to be honest, in three dimensions, it's almost, it's more likely that they're skew. Well, either they cross or they're skew. Then the, or more likely they're skew, then probably cross, and then probably parallel. Just so you know. Again, you could graph those two lines in the space curves. Graph one space curve, add another one, and you would see that they are um, skew lines. Uh, if you go to graph, you can clear all graphs, and then you can add a space curve back in. Okay, there's that one. And let's go add another space curve. And And since I know they happen to cross, well, they don't cross, but they happen to cross near t equals 2, I'm not going to go that far out. So I'm just going to just demonstrate this. Maybe I go out to 3 or something and hit graph. But look at that line up there like so. Okay. And if I show orientation arrows on it, that's great. Okay. And But here I want to... Uh, Here's where, of course, I could really stand to zoom in a little bit. Uh, oh, because it was not 2t plus 6. It was 2t plus 5, you dork. Sure, they look like they cross. <laughs> they don't. Now you can see that they do not cross. They are indeed skew lines. They are not crossing one another. Um, I can zoom in a little bit tighter on that. I know I don't need to go negative at all on my y's and x's and z's, so I'll get rid of those. So I can zoom in just a skosh tighter and see what happens. And I could probably go a little bit more yet. And if I had my mouse, I could zoom better with it. But with my trackpad, it's pretty clear they don't cross, I think. But you can rotate it around and see that they are indeed skew lines. Okay? So they do not cross one another. But the way to show that is to use symmetric equations to show that. All right. Now, what you have all been waiting for. Jay, how do we do the equation of a plane? I'm dying to know. I know, me too. Now, back in, 
I don't know, algebra one, whenever you learned that, you learned that you needed to have two points to create a line, right? And, and of course, you did that by finding the, the, the slope, right? Which, of course, is delta y over delta x, right? So it's 5 over 4. True? There's your slope, and then so that's your m, and then you just go like 7 equals 4 times 5 fourths plus b. So this is 5, so that's 2. So y equals 5 fourths x plus 2. Ta-da! That's one way to do it. Another way to do it is to write m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, although I'm just going to leave those off for right now. Treat that as a number, so y minus y1, m, and then this is x minus x1, right? You've seen that before, probably. I'm sure you have at some point. And then if you subtract that to the other side, you get m, x minus x1, um, minus y minus y1, or something along these lines. The idea being is that we could rewrite it in a fashion similar to this. Well, it turns out, back in geometry, somebody told you that the definition of a plane, you had to have three points, right? And of course, it goes on in all directions. But the question was, well, why did that have to be that way? Okay. Well, the reason it has to be that way is as follows. Okay. In order for this to happen, we need to have, in order for us to have a plane, we need to have two vectors. Okay. Two vectors. Now, it turns out that there are one, two, three, four, five, six vectors in this plane between those three points. I need two of them. Because a plane is defined by a vector that is what we say normal, but that really just means orthogonal. To it, and a point on it, okay? This requires three points, okay? In order to do that, you need three points. So let me come up with three points off the top of my head. Three, one, five. Two, four, six. Eight, zero, five. Now I'm going to choose two of these points, and it doesn't make a hoot of difference which one. So I'm going to choose these two and make that vector, and I'm going to make this vector as well. You can choose another one. Here's the beauty of it. But Jay, I used two that you didn't use. Awesome. Guess what? You'll get the same freaking equation. Gotta love it. Now, from here to here, this is negative 6, positive 4, positive 1. Right? And from here to here, that's 5, negative 1, 0. True? So, if this is A and this is B, if I do A cross B, what I will find is a vector that is sticking either into the pad or up out of the pad. But in either case, this thing will be orthogonal to my plane. Okay? So I, J, K, 5, negative 1, 0, negative 6, 4, 1. Again, you can use the calculator for this part when I'm just doing um, an application of it. That's fine by me. It's a J. But I'm just going to go ahead and do it this way so that you need a little more practice. So it's negative 1 minus 0, so negative i. This is 5 minus 0 is 5, so minus 5j. And then that's 20 plus 6 is 26k. Okay. Now here's the beautiful thing. I can rewrite that as negative 1, negative 5, 26. And I'm going to call this my normal vector. Okay? Nice, huh? And in that normal vector, this is A, this is B, and this is C. 
So it turns out one way to write the equation of a plane is simply this. Ta-da! So it would be negative 1, x, minus, uh, and what was one of my points? Well, one of my points was 8, was, well, let's do this one, 3, 1, 5. So minus 3, and then it's going to be minus 5 over here because that's that. y minus 1 plus 26, z minus 5. Zero. Okay? That's the equation of that plane. Now, can I distribute that mess out? Yes. Do I want to do it by hand? Well, I will this time. Is that right? That looks about, no, it's not right, you dummy. It's 130, isn't it? Yeah, I think it's 130. Right, 130? 30, yep, 130. So that is 8, so negative 122. So I'm going to add that over here to make it positive 122. And then I'm going to have negative x minus 5y minus 26, or plus, plus 26z, dope plus 26z is equal to that. But you'll notice that in the 3D calc plotter, everything was z equals. Well, let's solve for z, shall we? So 26z is equal to 122 plus x plus 5y. And then let's just divide the whole shoot and match by 26. That is the equation of my plane. Now, I'm over here. Clear all graphs. Let's go to, let's, uh, you can just go back to this resume, refresh button, clear that graph, and then go in here where it says z equal, and then just type in your equation. So, parentheses 122 plus x, what was it? I forget. Plus 5y. Uh, come on. Plus 5y, parentheses, divide by 26. And the graph, but of course I can't see it because my window's terrible. Ta da! There's my plane. But what would be even more impressive is to see if my points actually show up on that plane because that was what was supposed to happen. So my points are, I forget, 3, 1, 5. Oh, please don't do it again. God dang it, you did it again. Give it to me. Please allow me to keep going. Darn it. And of course I can't even. Mm. I hate Java. Control, Alt, Delete. Hmm. Alrighty then. Weird. All right, let's try this again. Get a little irritated with it. Parentheses 122 plus x plus 5y divided by 26. 
course you don't see and that's okay I'm gonna go ahead and add my points while I'm thinking about it my points are three one five I'll make them so they stand out um, eight zero five and two four six Alright, now I'm just going to change my stupid window. Yeah, baby. Now look at that. You see all three points? All three points. That's right. On the plane. That's how you know you're right. That's awesome. Alright, now. Let's do another of those quickly. Uh, so again, suppose you have three points. And so let's say I use these two, so that's going to be five, zero, seven. And let's say I use these two, and so it's going to give me negative seven, one, negative two, right? Go from here to there. Yeah. Right. So let's do, it doesn't matter which way you cross it, by the way. So let's just do. Let's do B cross A this time. Again, all it will change is whether that thing is sticking up or down out of the plane or into the plane. Won't matter a bit. I promise you. So when we look at this, um, I, J, K, negative 7, 1, negative 2, 5, 0, 7. So it's I, 1, negative 2, 0, 7. Minus j, negative 7, negative 2, 5, and 7, plus k, negative 7, 1, 5, and 0. And so that's 7 minus 0 is 7, so 7i. Negative 49 plus 10 is negative 39, so plus 39j. And that's 0 minus 5 minus 5k. By the way, if you wanted to make this normal vector a unit vector, you totally could because all you need is a vector that is orthogonal to it. That's it. Okay? So, my equation then is simply this. It's 7 parentheses x minus 3, 1, 2. I'm going to use 3, 1, 2. 3 plus 39 y minus 1 minus 5 z minus 2 equals 0. You with me on that? Nice. Now, there is also a way to do this quickly on your calculator. And since most of us have 89s, I think it's a worthwhile thing to know. So I'm just going to do solve. I'm going to go 7 parentheses x minus 3 plus 39 y minus 1 minus 5 z minus 2 equals 0 comma z. Bam, that's it. So 7x plus 39y That's what it said, right? I think. Minus 50. Okay? And then it's simply a matter of going and plugging that into the calculator and away you go. Okay? So that's fabulous. Now, there is another way to write the equation of a plane. That, again, is my favorite way to pull it off. OK? 
okay? There's also this way, which at first you're thinking, this looks horrible. Why on earth would they do it? Until I tell you ha, that this is just the vector way of saying what we're saying right here. Where this guy right here is x, y, z. And this guy right here is 3, 1, 2. And this mate and this guy right here is 739 negative 5. And so you're going to subtract these guys first and then take the dot product of this and this. So it's going to be x minus 3, y minus 1, z minus 2, dot 739 negative 5 which I've not written them that way, so if you prefer to write it like this, you totally can. But it's the same exact thing. Dot x minus 3, y minus 1, z minus 2. And what happens when you dot this? Well, it becomes that times that. This times that, so 39 minus 5, z minus 2. Again, equals 0. So it's the exact same thing. It's just a vector way of looking at it. Oh, crap. Hmm. And then, oh, it erased it. Darn it. Which is, again, 7x minus 3 plus 39y minus 1 minus 5z minus 2 equals 0. So it's the same exact thing. Another way to write that, of course, is if you have this, dot, this. Well, remember, that's just distribution. So you could do this. This is That's a vector. Minus this. Or another way of saying that is this equals this. Right? That's another way of saying it. We don't use that one a whole whale of a lot. We just don't, okay? Um, again, I like this version. You're totally welcome to get down to the, wherever it went. I swear I wrote it down somewhere, didn't I? I know I did. Somewhere I had this where z was equal to, it was on the calculator a few minutes ago, 7x plus 39y. minus 50 over 5 or that could also be written as 7x over 5 plus 39y over 5 minus 10 that's one way to do it you could also equal z or you could also multiply everything back by 5 and so you'd get this you'd have 5z you have 7x plus 39y minus 10 or 50 rather and then you could do this. You could say, well, bring this guy over. So you'd end up with, you could do it a couple different ways. You could say 7x plus 39y minus 5z minus 50 equals 0. So same idea. Um, just lots of different ways to show it. Which one's better? Ah, the answer is eh, it doesn't matter a lot, to be honest with you. Um, preferably, if it's me, I like this one. I like z equals because that's a quick way to put in the calculator, but we're going to need to start getting used to some of the matrix notation or the vector notation. It's kind of a big deal going forward. Okay? All right. Mm -hmm. Now, suppose, hypothetically, just, I don't, you know, it is what it is, I guess. Um, you had a plane down here like so I guess I guess I'll draw it kind of like that that's my plane okay and I said to you well okay I maybe you want to find the distance from a certain point to a plane so there's a point up here somewhere okay and I want to know how far it is down to the plane well and of course we always measure that in a perpendicular fashion right 
So what we need to do then is this. Well, wait a minute. If this is a perpendicular fashion, hey, that's the normal vector. In other words, the normal vector is a vector that is perpendicular to the plane. Now, it might be longer than that. So it's not exactly what I want, but it's kind of what I want. Okay, it's, it's almost what I want. All right. Now, we, uh, we're going to talk a little bit more about this in class on, on um, Monday, Wednesday. On Wednesday, we're going to talk a little bit more about vector projections and scalar projections. But we're going to talk about the idea that, you know, if you had a line, a vector like this, and the sun was above you, let's get rid of this one for right now. The sun was up here, it would cast a shadow straight down, yes? And what would it do? Well, it would project this picture down here onto a flat spot. That makes sense? And the length of this guy, we're going to actually call the uh, uh, scalar projection, the length of it. It's just a length. Okay. The actual vector with the length and the direction we call the vector projection. Okay. So we're going to talk a little bit more about that in class on um, on Monday or Wednesday rather. So I want to kind of leave that for there. So when you get to the part of section five where it talks about vector projections and scalar projections, I want you to just go ahead and stop right there. Okay. Now I think that's what I want to do for the video for this week. Again, if you have any questions, please by all means email me. Uh, but we're going we're gonna to start off class Wednesday night talking about these two guys. And then we'll kind of see where we play it from there. So 9.4 and most of 9.5 homework you can do in addition to 9, 1, 2, 3, and 7. Somewhere I've got the stupid record button.